I'm sorry, but if you didn't go to film school, I'm not about to waste my time on you. You're practically doomed to fail. Just go work at your stupid 9 to 5. You're not going to achieve these goals. Alright, son. I know you're about to graduate high school, and just when you thought you'd started to get the hang of things, everything's about to change. Now, and since I heard you'd been getting pretty into film, I know I need to sit you down. I know decision days right around the corner, so let me walk you through this. But to do this, I've got to take you back. The year is 2020. The world's falling apart, the future's unknown, and we're marching for our lives. And I'm graduating high school. Now, first of all, it's a wildly tough process deciding what college you'll be going to in the fall. But when the alternative is staying home, stuck, quarantined with my parents for another year, that really lights a fire behind you. I still remember staying up till 2 a.m. talking it through with my mom and dad. What was I to do? What was the safe choice? What was the good choice? And what was the right choice? It was between these three Africans. The smart school, the art school, and the smarty art school. Ultimately, I realized, if movies was really where my heart was at, it didn't matter where I went. The only thing I needed to make sure I would be getting is people. So I landed on Northwestern. You know, I would have gladly gone to NYU, but there's a little thing in my way, you know, a uh, little hefty, thick wall of $240,000 of debt. There's no biggie. I digress. I've seen the same videos that I'm sure you've seen. You don't go to film school. Don't go to film school. You don't need to go to film school. By the end of the course, nearly 50 people switched majors. And I'd heard it all before. And while I could have stayed home for another four years and tried to get into indie sets, I know my self-destructive ass could not go through that journey alone. At least not without strict support provided by a film school. Or the people in it. I probably could have kickstarted my production company. Unfortunately, my co-founder would be busy with school anyways, and I had no clue where to start. I was a wildly different person in 2020. Alright, son, so let's say you went to film school. And the next thing you know, it's been four years, you're stuck in the same place, wondering what the hell happened since they extended spring break by two weeks, and then you... No, what? I'm not projecting about my experience during COVID. If you're expecting film school to be the silver bullet you need to succeed, unfortunately, nine times out of ten it won't be. For most folks. If you simply coast through film school, you'll undoubtedly be statistically no better off than someone who didn't. So here's some things that if you happen to decide, hey, this might be for me, you shouldn't do. Go to a film school during a pandemic. Another thing you shouldn't do, be a part of every film set. Being at film school is a fantastic opportunity if you know how to use your time wisely. I'm not saying be selective because, oh, you're this hot shot. No, no, no. I don't care who you are. I'm saying be selective because one, you should firstly, absolutely go on as many film sets as you can to learn as much as you can. And then once you feel like, okay, I'd like to level up, that's when you're going to experiment with your own projects. When all you do in your free time are those projects, that doesn't leave much to living life. For example, when you're on every set, that doesn't just fill up your weekends. If you want time to yourself, it's like trying to go out when your mom says you can't leave until after you finish all your chores. And she keeps giving you more chores. These sets fill up your week with pre-production, production meetings, location scouts, fundraising, and more. Never letting you join more clubs, hang with friends, and especially make your own movies. Don't do that. Another thing you shouldn't be doing, Graduating early. Look, I graduated early in three years. When I graduated early, I saved approximately $2,000, which is fantastic. But in the grand scheme of things, I probably lost out on so much more money from all the grants that I missed out on or all the time I could have spent using this free equipment, essentially. Look, if you're gonna graduate early, just make sure financial aid is covering your summer semesters. And don't start drama. All right, you're not in high school anymore. There's really no point to be making beef with anyone. Be a good person. I know that's a weird piece of advice, but if no one else is gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, don't be an asshat. And if somebody's trying to start beef with you, 
I promise you, as long as you're a good person, nobody cares. All right, just set them aside, keeping you and keeping a good person. Don't do your homework. All right, not exactly don't do your homework, but look, film school is fantastic for giving you the resources to become the artist that you want to become, but the whole academic process of it is still a little behind. So I'm not gonna say don't do your homework, but really make sure that you have time and you're able to emphasize your own projects. There's a way to organize your life so you have enough time to get that 4.0 GPA, to be and make your own project, to be in clubs, to do internships. There's a way to do all of that. I'm just begging you, make sure to leave some time open and organize your time better to focus on your own creative endeavors. All right, so if there's so many caveats to going to film school, what's the point of even going? I feel like a lot of you are still thinking that you could survive without it and find other means to getting the benefits, right? And here's why I stayed and why I think film school or, you know, higher education is still the avenue to go through. For most schools, this is still the only place where you can exactly get a double major or a minor or something in business, right? Or entrepreneurship. I stayed because I was able to take some entrepreneurship, some marketing, some business courses, which left me a little more well-rounded than just a run-of-the-mills person who took a bunch of photography or cinematography classes, right? I knew that at the end of the day, this is still a business. And I need to at least have a slight grasp on this whole business side of filmmaking. Professors. Now, I have my fair share of beef with some professors, and I'm not alone. At the end of the day, most of them, or I want to say at least the better most part of them, are there to advocate for you. And if it's not most, then there's always a professor there that will advocate for you. And whether you're on the good or bad side of a professor, sometimes may make or break you getting a job or uh, getting a referral to some next step after college. So don't be afraid to stay after class, talk to your professor, see if they want to grab a coffee and see how they got into the industry. Learn more about them. Don't just treat them like a teacher, right? I feel like there's a disconnect between students and teachers, but once you get to college, I think you need to take that extra step and get to know them better. Then there's parties. Well, I don't have to tell you why those are great, but... I should tell you why they're almost necessary. Look, at the end of the day, if you want to be a director or a writer like me, you need to have stories to tell. And if those stories don't happen at parties, they're going to happen at pre-games. Or they're going to happen while you're hanging out with friends, debriefing about the party. Or they're going to happen with people that you met at a party, right? The point is, I'm not telling you to use these as opportunities to squeeze out an experience or network. No. I'm saying live your life so eventually you can write that life. And now the biggest reason why I still think film school or higher education is still relevant is because of internships. Look, at the end of the day, a lot of the stepping stones to getting higher into that filmmaking ladder aren't just becoming a PA, right, or being on set. It's being an agent's assistant, starting the mailroom, going into development, or PAing not on a set, but being some assistant anywhere else, right? A lot of those things depend on internships. I know everybody jokes around about how it's impossible to get five years experience when you've never worked, so how the hell are you going to get work, right? Look, as unfortunate as it is, the solution to this is just internships, right? So talk to your professors, talk to your advisors, and although from my experience they weren't able to get me on set or on any network television shows, but what they are able to do is help you get those internships, fix up your resume, look for internships, look for internship opportunities. That's the biggest reason why I think higher education is so important. And I will be honest, I hope that by the time that I'm giving you this message, son, that these resources and that leverage that university gives towards internships, I hope that's gone and I hope that's done with. But as we stand today, that's where you gotta, that's how you're gonna get your foot in the door. At the end of the day, I'm not your mom. Make your own goddamn decision. But what's right for me isn't right for you. Ultimately, we're all on unimaginably different paths. If you have unwavering Mr. Beast discipline, honestly, take out that loan for your own enterprise instead of film school. Otherwise, just don't feel pressure to go either way. I have some fantastic friends who didn't go to film school. And in fact, have been hired by them to work on some sets. 
university is truly a very outdated system for filmmaking. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have its place. So stop worrying. Go make your own place.